been a while. Yeah. Wilder yeah. was for you. I was trying to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there paper roll? Okay. I want to eat paper. Mm -hmm. I think mm. we're live. We're live. You have to focus. Uh -oh. Is that how I froze? <laughs> no, that was. Uh, that was oh, yeah. yeah, that was the one when we were in Tennessee. Yeah, that was a different one. That was. Uh, that was oh, great. yeah. Yeah, that was the one when we were in Tennessee. Yeah, that was a different one. Look like COVID? Well, it's a good picture. <laughs> they got all the best <laughs> audio on that one. Aw. The last one, I don't think they got any one. Okay, we got somebody on. We got one person watching. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Morning. Shame on the devil. <laughs> Do you want one? Morning. Good morning, our miners. Yeah. You know what? I don't know. We weren't here. Well, I said we weren't here. Yeah. You got, yeah, that's a, that's a big gap. And we couldn't watch it online. We couldn't well, from what I remember last week, Steve stopped with verse 5. Okay. And, uh, and if not, then there'll be a recap anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to have a recap. Um, there are verses I read in Numbers uh, 32, 33 today, and good night. Good reminders. Good reminders of stuff you just don't always put before your eyes. Well, let's go ahead, have a word of prayer. Without the Lord, we can do absolutely nothing. And we need his power and his grace this morning to help expound the word. Heavenly Father, we just call upon your precious name. And Lord, uh, you are so great. And, and Lord, even according to your word, this world doesn't even know a smidgen of the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ and the, the, his power to save people from every single sin. Yeah. And Lord, we don't spend enough time with you to get to know your heart, to know when you cry, to know when things bother you, when your wrath gets up, and you see all the injustices that are happening down here upon this earth. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, you'll tend to raise our heart Remember, our frames are but dust. Without you, Lord, we can do absolutely, absolutely nothing. And here at BBF Ohio, Lord, we would love to do something, but not in our power, not in our strength, but according to the indwelling power you've given us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We just pray right now the Holy Spirit will uh, open up the word, open up every heart, and Lord, open up your heart, and again, teach us out of your word. And uh, as I've read, over and over again, your goal is for us to be one with you. Be merciful to us now and draw us closer to your heart. In Jesus' name we pray and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 6. But uh, among, among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ? We want to start with verse 6. And... Uh, I want to share something just a little bit out of Romans chapter 9. Romans 9 and 10 are extremely powerful. And we're not going to exposit that for quite a while yet. Hopefully the rapture will occur before we get Amen. that far. Amen. Amen. In fact, I don't mind the rapture occurring today. Amen. There's enough clouds out there. I am, I am ready to go. Amen. Uh, if you give me one answered prayer today, we're going out. And uh, let's take a look at Romans 9, chapter 9. And this is a hornet's nest. This is a gigantic hornet's nest. But we just want to 
We just want to hear just a couple of words on this one, dealing with our calling. Uh, this is talking about the children of, of Isaac, of Jacob, and Esau. And it says in verse 11, For the children, being not yet born, neither have we done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. And this is God's definition for election for what I see out of Scripture. Not of works, but of him that calleth. Amen. Both boys, before they did any good, before they did any evil, it deals with God doing the calling. And we go to verse 6, and it talks about, ye are called of the Lord Jesus Christ. So how in the world are we called? So I have a whole slew of uh, scripture verses that deal with that. Let's go with, uh, if we go in order here, let's start with uh, Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verses 18, 19, and 20. And you already know what those scriptures probably are, but it's a good reminder. Matthew 28. Look at Pastor, uh, Matthew 28. And the reason we start with verse 18, because the Lord Jesus Christ tells us something very important here. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Him, all power is given unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 19, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have. So see, so the amount of tracks is now doubled it's when you pass about like that. Right. But they have an interest in it. And uh, I did have some American flag tracks. There were two places where the political people were. Um, I did pass out all the gospel tracks on the first one. I had a couple. I missed out on the second one, DeWine's booth. So they got the archery track. Okay? Help them out in that way. So we'll go ahead and see what the Lord does. But we planted gospel tracks last night. And how does God call? He calls through the gospel. And what has the enemy done? This is what I have perceived in the last uh, 40 years since I've been saved. The enemy has infiltrated the Baptist ranks. They have, in they have infiltrated the Baptist printing houses. And they came up with this new thing of uh, lifestyle evangelism. Yeah. And that is not the gospel of Christ. Never has been and never will be. All right. The fact is, as soon as someone finds out you're a Christian, you're normally a target and they're going to throw stones. They're going to shoot arrows. You're going to be going downhill. Right. Lifestyle goes against their lifestyle and you now become a threat to their lifestyle. Right. All right. But the only way you're going to get to know the heart of God is by letting them attack you. But you have to share with them the gospel. There's uh, one of my sad stories, but favorite stories, when there used to be a Union 76 at the corner of Schrock and, uh, Schrock and Cleveland. I was in line there to, to, to pay for gas. And I went ahead, the guy, I think, he might have been Mexican, I'm not too sure. But I handed him a gospel tract to read. And there's a whole lot of people standing around me. He goes ahead, holds it up in the air, and does a dance and then slam dunks it into the garbage can, right in front of me. And that made me really sad. You know what? On Judgment Day, it's a great white throne judgment. On that day, he can't say to the Lord Jesus Christ, well, you never gave me an opportunity. That's right. Or he can say, oh yeah, let's, let's have this video back there at Union 76 when you was handed the gospel track. That's right. Aha, uh -huh, look what you did. Oh, you slam dunked it. Bye-bye. Now, I still pray for the guy. And we're going to get into a verse here about praying without ceasing. And every single person I give a tract to, I, I pray for him, and I put it in the Holy Spirit's hands, and I keep that in prayer. Amen. And I keep it in prayer for the ones that I know I should have given a tract to. Those are the ones I really feel bad on. But you know what? I keep them all in prayer. Let's quickly take a look at Matthew, Mark, chapter 16, Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. 
And uh, we'll just do verses 15 and 16, and that's all we'll need for this. In verse 15, again, Christ is talking to his disciples. And he said unto them, Go ye. It's not come ye. Come ye to the church. Guys, go ye into all the world. What? All the world. Now, the, the best thing I can tell you for all the world at this point is what world are you living in? What is the world you're living in? Don't worry about the 8 billion people. You can pray for them. But how about the world, your circle? Circle family. Circle friends. Yes. And also, because people are falling away from local churches, they're losing the opportunity that everybody here has when you support this ministry. We're going into more than 100 countries through the internet. Oh, amen. And reaching the world. Our, Amen. You know, doing our part anyway to reach that those oh. billions of people. Oh, absolutely. You know, but as far as on a personal business, you draw a circle around all the people you know. Amen. One, one of the things that Jill and I have done down through the years, I've collected about every address that I could get of every single relative, which means England and a couple other places, and I have sent them a gospel tract through the mail. Not a single one of them can say, well, you know, we, we never got it. Yeah, you got it. You just didn't like it. Mm -hmm. All right? And it's just going to make me sad for those that uh, that got it and did not understand that they needed to be saved. I don't want to jump ahead of you. Are you going yeah. to Acts 1A? Uh, no, we weren't going there. Okay. The next place was... But, uh, okay, I just wanted to throw this in there because what you're saying is exactly matches what we're talking about in Acts 1A. When he says the Holy Spirit come upon you, you'll be witnesses... It starts where he was right at the time in Jerusalem. Yes. And then he and says into Judea, and that's and that's Samaria. like uh, Ohio. Right. And then Samaria, Samaria. would be Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we're in the outermost part of the earth. We're crying after. <laughs> I hate to break the news to you. We're crying after Thanksgiving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yes, yeah, that's okay. exactly. Yes, that's exactly it. I believe in the resurrection. When now Jill and I got married, every single person that sent a sanity form of gift or anything showed up to wedding and everything, we got Rock Ruckman's book, a pamphlet on the rapture. Mm -hmm. And we mailed it to every single one. All right? And I had a, a couple question me on it, uh, but they didn't like it. They didn't care for it. But Why? it's okay. The rapture is going to occur, and you're going to be left behind. But you were given warning way ahead of time. Right. Way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, there are times, and we haven't been doing it in the last couple of years because we, we get burned out sometimes because you sit there for hours and hours and hours of doing Christmas cards. But uh, we have at, uh, at one point sent them to every single person we've known. We'll collect addresses through the years, uh, dentists and doctors and so what, you know, and send them a gospel track. We're trying to reach the whole world. Uh, a couple of years ago, since Jill graduated from uh, Centerville, all right, I and uh, I had uh, all the addresses from my classmates. Every single one of them got a gospel track. At every address that we had. We had uh, we took two from each state because we. Yeah, we well, we did that too. Well, I I. Uh, nine was nine hundred. Wow. Yeah. No, we just took two. Yeah, well, and hers was gigantic, but well, we covered all of them. Centerville, like Dayton. Yeah, that's a huge. Yeah, that's just, huge. Yeah, we just took two but, people from each state. Yeah, yeah but we had yeah, but one year we passed out gospel tracts to two people in every single state, fifty. Right. So we we look for ways to be creative, you know. And uh, I had one guy I did a Christmas card one year. You guys would definitely freak out over it. But when you opened it up, there's cross <laughs> instead of a baby in a manger. There's Jesus on the cross. And there's blood all, I took a red marker because I designed the artwork, okay? There's red blood dripping down everywhere. <laughs> that was my <laughs> Merry Christmas card, Amen. okay? Well, I didn't know it, but one of the guys that, uh, that I, I sent the card to, his wife worked at uh, Ohio BMV, and uh, so that's where I got the address from. I didn't know this, but he was an international writer, you know, for the world. He was in contact with world leaders sending them information. He calls me up after Christmas and says, do you have any more of those? I said, sure. He came over and collected all of them. 
and sent that card to all the world leaders. Wow. That. Wow. Wow. Yes. You're, you're wondering why I'm still alive. <laughs> well, I probably won't to last too much longer, but I'm going to enjoy what I got, okay? But so those were the surprises. You don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, Mark uh, 16, 15 and 16. And said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How do people get called? Through the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall, not, shall be damned. All right, you got it right there. Next in Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. Uh, 46. We'll go 46 to 48. Dan would like to apologize for making noise. Ah, uh, no problem. I'm, I'm uh, stone deaf in one ear now and can't hear out the other. <laughs> no problem. All right. Let's take a look at verses 46, 47, and 48. Again, this is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in the third book, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And said unto them, Thus it is written, written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Amen. You notice that? In his name. Amen. There's a big movement during the last three or four years that whatever you do, it's in the name of the church. They are, um, I've got a couple of clues on who set that up, but they're telling you, no, promote the church, Jesus comes second. I've seen that all over the place. Yeah, they're pushing church membership. All right? They're getting you stuck within a church, so therefore, if you're not part of that church, well, you don't necessarily have to be there. Out. Either sign up or you're out. Either do what we say or you're out. That means they'll omit the word of God, they'll omit the gospel, they'll omit the whole works. They're trying to get people to commit so they can get money for the conference. I, that, I don't doubt that for one second. There's also a movement to tell you that using the name of Jesus is uh, apostate, and that if you're really saved, you call him Yeshua Hamashiach. <laughs> or, uh, and then there's other groups that say that the only name of God is Yahweh or Jehovah or whatever. And they, they are actually claiming that we're not even saved because we're using the wrong name because the name of Jesus is English and he wasn't English. <laughs> and just a quick answer to that is, the entire New Testament is written in Koine Greek, and all the apostles called Jesus by the Greek, Jesus. Yep. So if we're lost, the apostles are too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's his name in English is Jesus, so there, there you go. But you know what? I don't recall anywhere in the Gospel of John, which talks about simply believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I don't find anywhere where it says, and now that you've believed, you must do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Well, they're saying that since it says it's preached yeah. in his name, the problem is you got his name wrong. Yeah. Eh. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you checked that group out. They don't even have the right Bible. Well, most of them don't, but there is one group who took the King James Bible and everywhere the term the Lord showed up, they put their, there's a sacred name and divine name Bibles. Wow. And one of them says Yahweh and the other one Jehovah. But every time that, that they, so they've taken the King James and changed every reference to the Lord to say whatever name they think should be there. Wow. So that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but do they realize those? That, the divine or sacred name Bible. Wow. They, they, they are being so flippant about it though. Because the actual rabbis, if you were to take a, a hat pin and put it in a certain place where Yahweh is, all the Yahwehs should have a hole. Yeah, but see, that's the thing is both sides are wrong. Yeah. yeah. The rabbis, it's one of the reasons they missed Jesus when he came is because they added all this nonsense about well, yeah. him pronouncing his name became blasphemous. Well, they shouldn't have added all the, one hundred. what is it, 114 laws to the... The 30 some laws. Yeah, well, it all came from the to whatever it was. They added to the mosaic law. Yeah, but they should. They, yeah. they, 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 you know, 
They, they shouldn't have done that. We're on verse six. But Thank never mind. All I remember, you finished five last week. He's just telling Stephen we're going to seven. Huh? Seven? You got down to seven? Yeah, I got seven. Well, that's all right. Well, we're having fun with verse six. I told it's like to recap, okay? I mean, it's good to see we can, here. <laughs> we can move on. Jenny tried looking it up, and you hadn't been posted seven. yet, so. Well, yeah, so we'll need to have your, uh, we'll need to exchange phone numbers just oh, for that right. mental, that mental lapse. Okay, you get up to seven. No, Look. no, go ahead. Well, I've got notes going down to eight or nine. Just keep, just keep huh? going. Keep Stephen going. wants to hear the good stuff. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead. We'll keep on going. Yeah, I keep going on to six recap. if you're done with five. And this will be our first, our only yeah, overlap, so guys. Honest. I will try to get my ducks in line. Get anyway, so we need to yeah. Yeah. Stephen's work. I mean, he could be lying about how far he has to go. No, no, no. Get this. There's always how someone he looks to at scripture. The how Pastor Miller looks at scripture. How I look at scripture. Uh, it's not wrong. The Holy Spirit is indwelling us, and you know. I, Good night. I've been around for 40 years, so I picked up a little bit, not a whole lot, mm -hmm. but I picked up. So my insights are going to look a little different than what his insights are. And Pastor Miller, he, he's got all sorts of uh, hundreds of insights. So if he was to teach the same thing, it would come out different. In fact, if you asked us to all preach the same message on Romans 1 6, we would all zero in on something different about that verse. And none of it would be wrong. But Jesus, Christ, as as <laughs> but, but Jesus Christ is the only one who can take the Bible, have so many different off authors, and move them, and yet have it all woven together mm -hmm. so that yes. it says the same thing. Amen. Right. And that's all what we're showing here. Um, in verse 6, uh, Steve, we started with the word called. So we went to Romans to show that the word called comes from being called through the gospel of Christ. So we just went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and now we're in John chapter 17. John 17. John, uh, verse, um, <clears throat> verse 20. Verse 20. And uh, I really like this verse. Um, here's again the words of the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. John 17, 20. Neither pray I for these alone. Talking about the 11 apostles there. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Through their word. Again, these 11 are preaching the gospel and people hear the gospel being preached and because they're preaching the gospel, they are believing on Christ, not on the apostles. Amen. All right? And that's the same story Right now, this is being so twisted in fundamental circles that they want you to bring the lost people into the church and then have the pastors or the Sunday school teachers have them win them to Christ, all right? And that's a reverse of the gospel. The gospels we've shared here, go, go, go. Amen. And, uh, but look here, it doesn't matter if you've been saved for a week, five years, 10 years, 20 years, when you preach the gospel, Christ is praying for those that we're already witnessing to. I like that. It doesn't matter if you know all 66 books of the Bible or not. As long as you preach the gospel, the Holy Spirit's working with you and working with that unsaved person, bringing them into the fold. Amen. Believe on Christ. What? Through our words. Our words. We're preaching the gospel. Through our words, someone is going to get saved. Someone is out there waiting right now for one of us, or if not all of us, to be out there just sharing the gospel of Christ. And, uh, you know, it's uh, what a thrill. And uh, the greatest thrill I have is when I go out doing the Lord's work, I, that's what I want to be focused on. And when I'm not doing the Lord's work, I'm most miserable and backsliding. I can, I can guarantee you there. All right, let's take a look at uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Oh, you are going there. Yeah. Well, that was a good suggestion. <laughs> but again, it's, uh, it's, it's all him, guys. It's not us. It's all him. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. 
But ye shall receive power. And if you want to have fun with it, go back to Luke, is what we read in Luke 24, and the Christ told the disciples, wait in Jerusalem until you get the power. And here we are, the power has come. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. Ye shall be witnesses. Now, if you want to have fun with the Greek, if I think the word witness there means uh, martus, martyr. All right, but you don't, you don't need that to understand the verse. He's not asking you to be a martyr. He's asking you here, just go out and be a witness, be a, a living sacrifice, witnessing for him. Ye shall be. In other words, you're going to have a bad case of can't help it. You can't, you, you want to please the Lord and you want to see somebody get saved. And I will tell you this over the years, uh, and even some of the best people that have won people to Christ, they will, even the best ones that are honest with you will tell you, before they go out, they get the butterflies in the stomach. All right? And the reason for that is you're entering Satan's territory. Don't ever think for a second you're going out there and going to have a great time until after you start winning a couple of souls, you know, winning people to Christ. Once you've won them to Christ, you're looking for the next one and the next one. And uh, there, there is some fun in doing the Lord's work. But when you start off, you're always going to get them butterflies because you're entering in Satan's territory. And ye shall be witnesses unto who? Unto me. You're his witness both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. All right, we, again, as even as Pastor Miller was sharing again, Jerusalem, that's uh, Worthington for us. Judea would be Ohio. Samaria. Michigan. Michigan. And yeah, again, definitely. as Steve already told him, prepare to cry after Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> He's prophesying. I'm, I'm prophesying I'm already. Know. I'm praying hard against it, then but... That, what happened yesterday, what it was, they, that's, that's <laughs> they had, they had, back again. That they, well, uh... Well, they had that kid, that poor sick kid, he was probably praying. They did have a sick kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, they gave him three free touchdowns. Good night. Yeah, exactly. For the well, it was for the kid. Yeah, for the cancer yeah, kid. The there you go. Okay. See, Ohio State does have a tender heart. That's right. <laughs> Affirm thy friendship. Ohio. There you go. How, there you go, Jenny. How firm thy friendship. Way to go. <laughs> and of course, Samaria, that's the other, uttermost part of the earth. That's the every, everywhere else. Let's take a look at, uh, again, as a, uh, let's see, I've got, next line we have Romans chapter 1. Which is what we're already in. But we're going to take a quick peek at verses, uh, I think, 15 to 17. Romans chapter 1. Again, here's Paul talking now. The first uh, five scripture areas we talked about all were the words of Christ. Now we're going to see what Paul says, Romans 1.15. So, as much as, as much as it in me is, I am ready... I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. How powerful. I will, I will share with you how powerful just verse 17 is. The just shall live by faith. That was the verse that Martin Luther got a hold of, that just grabbed a hold of his heart. And he created the entire Western culture. One man can make a difference. When we, uh, hopefully we, unless the rapture occurs, we'll get into, I think, uh, Romans 5. Again, I'll tell you, one man can make a difference. One man made everyone sinners. One man makes everybody righteous. And for each of us, what can one of us do as when all of us get together and do something for the Lord? We, the chapters are not written yet for BBF Ohio, what the Lord can do in us and through us with the gospel of Christ. Paul said he was ready. 
The um, and then last of all, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. And again, 1 through 4. Just a plain reminder of what the gospel is. Um, back in my earlier days, there used to be a big debate <laughs> with the Pentecostals. Because you'll see posted on their door, full gospel. Yeah. Meaning, not only <laughs> the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, but speaking in tongues. All right? That was called the full gospel. And uh, if you guys could ever do any research, uh, the Pentecostal movement started around 1900, thereabouts. They spent a lot of time going to the Baptist revivals. That's where they picked up raising of hands and a couple of other items. All right? But most of your Pentecostal churches... Wherever a Baptist church was, the Pentecostal church would come up the next street and suck her in the stupid Baptists that weren't trained in the Word of God. Yeah, I can do it. That's what they did. Guys, Jehovah Witnesses do the same thing. They set up a kingdom hall and suck her in. I think like 40% at one point of Jehovah Witnesses were Baptists. Wow, that's what the Calvinists do. Yeah, the Calvinists, they are really sucking up the fundamental churches today and killing them all. Um, BBF is the fifth church <laughs> that's been merciful to let me be a member of, <laughs> okay? And I hope it's uh, till the rapture. <laughs> um, the first church I was in uh, only lasted for nine years and then faded. Uh, the second church I went to was supposed to be independent King James, but the pastor at that time, and I won't mention his name, but the, uh, you guys already know, he didn't believe the king danced with the word of God. He read from the pulpit, but he yanked me in the office because I was creating such a, a <laughs> earthquake. He said, John, the New American Standard is more close to the exact manuscripts. <laughs> and the other guy he had standing there also said the same thing. He became the pastor later on. All right. There was another guy that was on staff. He was carrying a King James Bible. But he believed the NIV was the Word of God. And so he was going up the stairs one day, and I said, well, hand me your Bible. I said, I'll show you why it's the Word of God. He grabbed that book and ran up the stairs as fast as he could. <laughs> the only guy on staff that was King James, is the, and I won't mention the name, but he's the pastor there now. But it's no longer an independent church. It's now Southern Baptist. Mm -hmm. Come on, check the doctrine out, guys. I'll probably get a zap for that. But mm -hmm. Sorry, check the doctrine out. It's now Southern Baptist Church, and they do not have a strong stand on the King James. You can go into that church and believe any book you want. It's okay. It's okay. Guys, I'm 100% authorized King James, and I'll tell you right now, you better have a King James Bible here in the pew. Amen. Don't bring in any of the garbage. Amen. God will not shed his light on garbage. Amen. And all these people are praying for revival here in America. Guys, you got the wrong Bible. God's not going to revive a dead Bible. He's not going to do it. It has to be the authorized King James. Because even if you had a revival with those phony Bibles, it's not going to last at all because it's part spirit and part flesh. And you don't know which one is spirit and which one is flesh. Cannot happen and will not succeed. Um, and that's where it goes on record. Uh, memory which I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. That's where we get the word vanity. In other words, believe it on yourself, not on Christ. We don't believe on the prayer. We believe on what Christ did on the cross. Amen. And it's the shed blood that's the payment for the sin. Amen. And guys, I am watching the blood disappear out of fundamental churches. Mm -hmm. It is disappearing left and right. Uh, and I'm even in a situation where the blood will not apply. And I am ticked off at that, okay? I am ticked off. Where's the blood at? The blood of Christ was shed for all my sins. I should be able, allowed to repent of all my sins. Amen. All of them. Not just some of them. Not part of them. All sins are under the blood. Yeah. And wherever you can't have that agreement with other Christians, you have personally opened up the door to let Satan come in. That's right. And that can be proved out of Scripture. Uh, and uh, we don't have time today to go on that, but that would be, uh, that would be a great thing to share with you. That when you can't have 
a union with another Christian that opens up the door for Satan to walk in. Okay, verse 2. But which also you're saved if you keep your memory of which I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the whole gospel right there. No tongues, no works, nothing else. That's it in a nutshell. That's right. All right? That's the gospel of God. That's all we have to do is take out and preach it. Yes? I thought of that, I thought of that one verse there without the blood of no remission of uh, sins. That's right. that's right. Yeah, that's Hebrews 9, 22. Yeah. And uh, uh, guys, I... I've seen John MacArthur's commentary on Hebrews 9.22. Anyone here can pick that thing up. And he definitely says in that book, it is not the blood of Christ that saves. That's crazy. It is the death of Christ that saves. That's crazy. Yeah. And they also removed the blood from Colossians 1.14 that we looked at a few weeks ago. And they're taking the blood out of the hymn books, editing, yep. editing the songs. Yes. Just amazing. Yeah. If you really would have fun, check the old songs from over 100 years ago and compare them to the same songs today, and you'll see that they've been altered. Yeah. They have been altered. I collect the old songs. My mouth drops totally when I see what the changes are. Well, that's uh, Romans 1 6. All right. And uh, one minute to spare. You're doing great. How about that? <laughs> Good. Close us in prayer. Close us in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father. We have a great gospel in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, it's not based on the church. It's not based on church works. It's not based on tithing, not based on speaking in tongues. The gospel is based on what you did on the cross for our sins. And Lord, when you died on that cross, every single sin was paid for. Amen. And I like the verse out of uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, I think verses 1 or 2 in there. It says, Christ was not only the propitiation of our sins, but for the whole world. Your precious blood has covered the sins of the whole world. They just need to hear the gospel and respond. You call people for salvation through us, through the gospel. And Lord, may each of us consider where we stand today. And uh, may we take a bold step with you and assert the gospel with someone this week. And Lord, may we see fruit abound to your account. Be merciful to us. Remember again our frames are but dust without you, we could do nothing. And Lord, we pray for your choicest blessings on the upcoming service and upon the, the music as well as the as far as the, the preaching of your word today. And steer our hearts up to draw close to you and to trust you with all our needs that we can shout out to the world. We do indeed have a great Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>